Hi everyone, welcome back to another resin pour. Today I'm working on a 12 inch diameter piece of wood that I had previously poured on and didn't like the results, so I gave it a little bit of a spray paint and I'm working it again. Along with my art resin brand resin, I'm using a mix of acrylic paints, mica powders, and epoxy pigments today. A good rule of thumb when you're adding pigments to your resin is not more than 10% pigment to resin, although I found that when I use acrylic paints, I use a lot less paint to resin than 10%, and when I'm using mica powders, I can get away with adding more. It's okay to mix and match like your pigments and your mica powders and your paints all in the same cup. Just be aware of your ratios so you don't get a super thick, yucky mess you have to try to work with. Because there's such a wide variety of mica powders, resin pigments, and paints, it's really a matter of trial and error and just experiment, have fun, and learn as you go. And per usual, I will link the supplies I use down in the description below. So after I added my clear coat of resin down on my board, now I'm starting to add in the pigments that I mixed in random patterns, trying to get it to look a little bit like a rock or geode style. This is a lot different than I usually do, and I've really come to love this style of pouring, so I think I'll be working on more of these. I mixed my resin and pigment in these small paper cups, these, you know, like Dixie cups, because then I can really bend the cup and get the right amount of resin to flow out of it. As you become more accustomed to working with resin, you'll start just developing your own little tips and tricks to help you produce the kind of art you're looking for. I like to pour my colors down next to each other or on top of each other, mixing in the acrylic paint set with the mica powders, etc. because that way when I heat them up and blend them, you'll get some really interesting effects, some lacing, some cell work, and all kinds of cool stuff can happen when you allow your different colors to touch and blend. You'll see that I come in with either my small little culinary torch or my heat gun. Both have different ways of working the resin. The torch is used just to heat up my resin a lot of times and pop bubbles, where the heat gun allows me to really blend my colors and push them around on the board. This piece was really meditative to work on. It was really relaxing because I didn't have a huge plan in place. I knew what colors I wanted to work with. I just wasn't sure how I was gonna put it all together. So this was a lot of fun and you'll see that I'm just playing and having fun with my resin and pigments. Feel free to fast forward if this is boring for you, but I hope you learned something from this video. 
Here I'm using my torch just to help soften the lines of the color that I've laid down. If I go in with my heat gun at this point, it'll blow it around way too much and that's not what I'm going for. So keep in mind your heat gun and your torch are just like any other artist's paintbrush or palette knife. They're simply a way to work your resin and blend your colors. I love using my heat gun to help fold and move the resin pigment over each other. It really helps create depth and dimension in your piece. I've noticed sometimes when I overheat my resin, which I tend to do a lot, but I don't worry about it too much because I always go back over my pieces with more resin. But what you can do is just, you can see that I'm tapping with my finger the dry spot and that will help adhere the resin to it because resin likes to flow where resin is. So by tapping on it with my finger, I'm adding a little bit of more resin to it and giving the rest of the resin a clear path to flow over it. Did that make sense? Anyway, I think you get the idea. You'll see I'm going in a lot with different layers over and over and over each other and I will just keep working my resin until it won't work anymore especially when I'm just putting down my first layer because I know that I can sand down my piece and get rid of any imperfections and then add detail work or clear coats in afterwards Applying heat to resin and pigment is like magic. That's how you create those cells and lacing effects. And yes, I'm very aware that my resin is smoking and sometimes I do this intentionally because I'm really trying to get a desired effect. And like I said before, I know I'm gonna be going back over this piece with a clear coat so I'm not worried about any scorched areas at this point. And don't forget to wear a respirator, especially when you're working resin the way I do. And I always wear a respirator, except when I'm doing my live streams on Instagram, because of course I can't talk when I have that big mask on. Now I'm adding in some highlight colors, that beautiful Merlot color by Black Diamond. And then you'll see I'm gonna go in with my Turquoise by Larez. Sometimes the best tool you can use on your piece are popsicle sticks. I use them for stirring my resin, mixing my pigments, and for dragging my color through my piece. Really works out nicely and creates these defining lines in your piece, especially when you're working for this geode, earthy mineral appearance.
Can you see how my resin starting to turn into taffy? That means we need to call this piece done for now and let it cure and come back to it. So the next day I mix up some more art resin and I lay down a clear coat. And I really love the way the piece turned out so I think I'm just going to accent it with some tumbled crushed glass and call it good. I'd really love to know your thoughts on this piece, so leave a comment below. And if you like what I'm doing, please hit subscribe. That lets me know to keep making these videos for you. Have a great day everyone. See you next time.